One, two, three. Wow, y'all are n absolutely wonderful, sensational. Holy cow, that was 30 minutes long. I under no circumstances expected it to perform that well, but welcome back. This is number three. Nobody watched number two, but who cares? This is all about making stuff, learning and moving on. I had, I don't know what the hell's going on. <laughs> I don't know what the hell's going on. I'm just gonna keep making videos. This one is going to be uh, about where we are. And I'm gonna touch on a pretty big like corporate thing that I hope gives a bit more context overall to how it not only works, but where this could all go. It's inspired by, we'll get to that. Welcome back. This is the next steps. This is the third one in July. We're gonna talk about a few things. Let's get into it. <sighs> I feel like I need to take a deep breath. I feel like since the last one, I can't believe I even did the last one right before or right after I left. I felt like I did that one while I was still at Corporate America, but um, apparently not. So for today's agenda, we're gonna talk about the progress so far, what's happened overall, how am I figuring things out? Because part of what I would like to do down here is help provide a more clear understanding to y'all about what the hell is it like when you leave your corporate job after so long, especially based off of the level that I was at at the company. And can you actually sort all of those things out and move forward? There are days where I have not full on panic attacks, but I feel pretty friggin' anxious about it all. And days where I'm like, this is absolutely glorious and things are progressing well. So progress so far, where value meets scale and practical time blocking, that's kind of the larger conundrum right now. And I think everybody can potentially learn something through what I'm trying to sort through. Capacity modeling, uh, next steps. We're also gonna get a little bit of the corporate 101 stuff. So first, let's talk about why July has been a total hot mess. At least it has felt like a hot mess on my side. By the way, this is all recycled paper and I use a lot of the slides twice when they're redundant. So, and at some point too, like I need to figure out how I can use an iPad for this. But uh, for now, I ask for, uh, ask for a bit of forgiveness in regards to the amount of paper that I'm using. It is recycled. I might've said that in the past one. All right, so I left, this was the last day went straight to Oregon, then we had Kelly's birthday, then we had, this was actually Vegas, uh, and then VidCon, and then we were back, and then it was 4th of July, so I feel like I had uh, maybe this day, and this day, and part of this day, to like really start to figure out what the hell I was doing. I think I shot the first one like about here or so, and then the second one, must have been shortly thereafter. And then went to Montreal. Montreal was wonderful. We got a chance to see uh, La Centre Belle. I'll put in some B-roll shots here or Sloan will. Everybody say hi to Sloan again. Sloan's been killing it, by the way. Like these are coming to life in such a wonderful way because Sloan is doing a wonderful job. I did get a question in the comments last time about Sloan helping out, even though I said it in the second video. Uh, I did get a question in the comments about Sloan doing TikToks and Reels. Those are still mine. Sloan has helped me out with a couple of those, usually for like the branded stuff if I need help uh, condensing things. But overall, it's been a really fantastic dynamic, especially because we've never even met in person yet. So thanks again, Sloan. All right, where was I? Vegas, this, oh, when we shot it. Montreal, La Centre Belle. Startup Fest. I wanted to go to Startup Fest for a couple of different reasons. This was an opportunity for me to figure out how much value I can actually bring to the table. And it felt like a lot. Like there were some really interesting questions about everything from full funnel marketing, customer acquisition, customer retention, but also things like team culture and team building. So that's part of what I'm trying to figure out. Like where do I put my time and attention in the short term? There's the platforms, but there's also the topics, right? If you're putting together a content strategy, strategy, which I'm yet to have, you need for those things to merge in a smart and sound way or else it's just going to be floundering, which I feel like I'm doing. Like, I don't know what I'm posting short form today. That's atrocious. Like, I should not, <laughs> I should not be in that position, but um, that's where we are. All right, so Montreal happened uh, and now we are here, right? Is today the 12th or the 13th? Today's the 13th. I got it right. Today's the 13th. My in-laws are here. Welcome, Paul and Donna. And the next week is going to be a bit of a hot mess as well. We've got a Mets game tomorrow, which is going to be lovely. Get a haircut in the morning. Then on Monday, we got Mr. Noah Khan, his MSG debut. That's going to be dope. Then we've got the A... 
MSG, I should put, the Major League Baseball All-Star Game. I'm meeting my nephew and my brother-in-law in Texas to go to this game. Part of a something that I'm doing with Major League Baseball Network that I'm super stoked about. And then back and need to keep hammering along on all the things. And this is also the where the worlds are trying to merge in regards to writing the book and doing the content as well. Part of me feels like I need to just go into a cave for like two weeks and continue to chip away at writing and also come up with what like the larger strategy is. But we'll talk about that in a second as well. So last two YouTubes, again, holy cow, thank you. That first one that I shot on the second did, like that's gonna be my, it is my highest performing YouTube of all time. So thank you, thank you, thank you. I didn't, again, did not expect for that one to perform nearly as well as it did, which is exciting. At the same time too, the second one was a snooze. I don't fully get it. I, I, th I thought it was super helpful. <laughs> the seven levels of energy, right? Like the ways to look at different things so that you don't just react in a, hey, I'm a victim here kind of mode, whatever. I'll leave it there. I think it's super helpful. It can totally change the way you look at the day to day, but uh, it's here if you want it. If you don't, all good too. And next steps, that was, that is a typo. I'm doing these things quick. We discussed in the last one, what can I do with another 60 hours a week? Be more present at home, teach you how to get addicted to appreciation, that's the book. All of these things that I can do that I will now use that extra time for, again, based on what we just discussed within the calendar, that's been a challenge so far. But at least I built this, I think you remember this from the last one as well, where I made a list of what are the things that I can do ranked in order from smallest market, most expensive product to gigantic market and should be doing pro bono, right? So this is kind of my North Star relative to how I should think about what I can offer in the broader sense. But the question is, how do I bring this to life? Like that's where I've been getting stuck. I've gotten a bit lucky so far. You know, I've got somebody that's already proactively reached out about executive coaching. Um, I've got some consulting work that is in progress, kind of. I won't say who yet, but there's some marketing consulting work that I've been asked to consider, which I'm very excited about. It's for a beer company. We'll let you figure things out from there. But it's like, how do I really bring all of this stuff to life? I figured out what I think is a big piece of translating this into this stuff which is what is the output model? The output model, or I should say the capacity model is how long does something take? This was a huge aha moment for me and hilarious. This is exactly what I did with my day job. Trying to figure out how do you do 20,000 commercials a year? What does that look like resource wise? How do you figure out process and scale and yada, yada, yada. That comes down to breaking things down into parts and pieces. If there is anything you want to do at work or as a side hustle, if you can break down the parts and pieces in regards to how long each thing takes, it makes it far easier for you to then figure out when are you going to do these things and then therefore how many of them can you do in a given day, week, month, year, etc. So for my output, my capacity modeling, I looked at three simple things, the long form YouTube content, the short form and the writing. For the YouTube and some people, are, especially those in YouTube are gonna be like, bro, there's no, effing way you were able to do that. But look, this is, I've got a phone up here. I've got these, these mics, mics which should probably, probably be closer that's plugged in that phone. Like this is a pretty down and dirty method. Sloan is in California. She turns around the edits. She's had two perfect ones in my humble opinion so far. So like this is totally possible. An hour to write these decks, maybe an hour of shooting. I'll take 30 minutes to review it, depending on how long it is. I'm erring on the side of no edits. Let's get it live. Let's see what we can do and learn and grow from there. Short form, I shoot that stuff on the fly. In fact, I should do a little um, something here just so I get a clip. This is basically what I do, right? So I'll be like, so this is me talking in the basement to you doing a blah, blah, blah. And that's basically how these things come to life. You know, and then I can do this and shoot it this way. And uh, there we have it. So short form will remain the same, I think for now. Uh, and then writing, I figured out it's about 2200 words for every six hours. And I figured out a path 
in regards to how I can get to book being done by the middle of August, though I'm having dinner with the editor on Monday night, I believe, Olivia, right? Monday night? And uh, we'll see. We'll see where we are. Got another chapter done. I'm still not nearly as far along as I would like to be, but uh, it is what it is, and I'll continue to work my ass off across the board. It is so wild to be in this, like, Tasmanian devil phase where I'm just, like, running and doing, and I can't I have to sort through this, but at the same time, I feel like I need to give myself some grace, but that's the conundrum. So, got the output modeling, the output, output, bit, 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 stutter, the output model, and then how does it look on a day-to-day -day basis? This is my Shangri-La model. I think that this is going to work super, super well. There just has not been a lot of days where I can really be cool with 4 a.m. to 9 p.m. being exactly like this. It's summertime. Evelyn doesn't have camp. We've, we're just doing a slew of things as a family across the board. There's been travel. I've got my in-laws in town. Those are all excuses, Tim. Shut the F up. They're difficult to work around. Give me some grace. Y'all saw me do maniacal stuff for like four straight years and I was doing it for another six straight years. Like I will figure this out, but I think I've got a good model here of basically first thing out of the gate, do the busy work, right? Get emails out of the way, whatever stuff I just need to do. Super caffeinated right away, just knock that stuff out. And then I'll do the short form. So this is basically exactly as it was in the world in which I existed when I was still at uh, Charter Communications. I still need that time to work out. I'm gonna give myself a little bit more time. I wanna get some strength back. Like, I don't love the weight that I'm at. I don't love a lot about where I am right now. I don't love, there's, there's some to be desired. I would like to get some strength back. Then three hours of writing where I can just focus, chill, and just write. And it has been so fun to get into that. Uh, lunch and futz, I only need 30 minutes to eat. And futz is kind of like, you know, really I could take a 15 minute break and continue to work as I'm doing it. but. Um, I think I need some time to futz. By the way, futz would be defined as effing around, and I want some time to eff around. Especially if Kelly's at home, I want to be able to hang out with her at least for like 10 minutes and just focus on her. I think a good calendar means you can actually be focused when you're doing on these things, or you can be present, I should say. Being present is key, so like laying this out the right way will allow me to be present in all of these situations. Afternoon, start off a little bit of YouTube and or shooting. It is 545. Kelly's going to come down here in two seconds and be like, yo, where's your order for dinner? So this is not where we are right now in present time. I'm just kind of laying out like what the ideal look like, ideal day would look like. Futs, I'm putting this in here because I probably need a bit more time in the afternoon to like do some stuff around the house. I've not done a lot of quote unquote housework in a long time. There's a lot of stuff that I could do to like clean out the basement a little bit, uh, etc. And also use this time when it's school year time again to pick up Ev from school as often as humanly possible. That's gonna be amazing. Afternoon block, all about writing again, 6 to 8 p.m., family, dinner, etc. Uh, snack hour, prep for tomorrow. So like, I think this works, this feels really good. But then the question is like, what do I do here and here, right? Again, it is 5.45 on a Saturday and I don't know what I'm gonna post today from a short form perspective. And I should post, like I never, I'm never short on ideas. I just, I gotta, these, these are things to sort through. This is what y'all will learn with me in real time and hopefully get a bit of entertainment value out of it as well. So what content to prioritize? Corporate America 101, like what do I sit down and actually crank out? I made this deck, you know, in parts and pieces over the last two or three days. Probably took about an hour and a half overall. You'll see why I've got this super complicated, uh, I'll cut to the chase just to make sure that you stick around for it. Um, this thing where I can explain like levels within corporate America and responsibilities, it's based off of a brilliant TikTok that uh, was done by this amazing human being. I hope I'm pronouncing this right, uh, Kaya. And I want to elaborate on a little bit more based on what I've seen. Anyway, what do I prioritize? Corporate America 101, like, hey, here's how you compose a good email. Those types of things. I've got all that in my head, but that takes time to put down on paper. Do I start there? Do I start with being an executive? Do I do more vlog stuff? I think this is the answer. I think starting with the basics and then expanding from there, that's probably the most value at the most scale, but this is how we learn. But then to where, right? There's this and there's YouTube, but like, I like writing and I feel like starting with the writing obviously helps the rest of it. 
I've been putting some things on Substack. Do I start to put that behind a paid wall now that I'm like, well, shit, this isn't my side hustle anymore. Like I need to be smart and not just give everything away or else, you know, then we're in a position where we're selling the house and I don't want to sell the house. LinkedIn, how often here, obviously like, so it's, what is this stuff? Where does it go? And then, you know, do I get smart? Like how can I use something like WhatsApp for testing? I tried that once, I think it worked super well. So the flow might be something along these lines. So this is where, let me know what you think. This is where like, we are literally having a conversation here. This is like a one-on-one -on -one chat, but you're like the boss to a certain extent because you control the subscribers, you control the comments, you control the likes, you control whether or not you tell friends about me. You telling friends about me is basically what grows things obviously with the algorithm as well, but you're basically the boss. This is kind of a one-on-one -on -one of sorts, but I want to turn it the other way around too, where like I can be the, but you get that part. WhatsApp question. So I did this the other day and it worked out well. And I thought the story ended up being a, a fun one and I got some solid feedback on it. Topic and a genre. So, you know, something I learned from my twenties, corporate America 101, being a dad, like what is the topic and then the genre? Is it funny? Is it sad? Is it a teachable moment? Like, what is the thing? And then that gives me an opportunity to test a story or test some sort of lesson of sorts that I can put on the table. And then if that is, you know, a good check, then that can become something that I build up for a long form topic. But then again, where does this go with the Corp America 101 and like, you know, all that kind of stuff, ETE, et cetera. So, Hopefully that makes sense, but that's what I'm trying to sort through right now. Saying it out loud helps tremendously because then I can wrap my head around all this uh, at least slightly better. So we're gonna pause here because I need to go check on what is happening for dinner, but this is what we're going to get into next. The problem with corporate America, how, oh God, I hate it when I don't know how to pronounce some of these names. Kaya, how Kaya laid it out in a super smart way that I replicated here, but, Hold on, don't you go anywhere. There's snacks on the shelf. Help yourself to a pair of sneakers. Be right back. Say your name, age, and occupation. What's occupation? What your job is. I have a job. <laughs> so say that. No, hey, you're a student, that's your job. My name, yep, age. my age, and my occupation. Yeah. <laughs> 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 All right, part two, one, two, three. All right, so. The problem with corporate America. This was laid out so, so, so well. The topic that seemed to spur all of it was why people stop wanting to climb the corporate ladder or where the broader frustrations lie. And basically what was laid out is that you start off as an entry-level employee and you're like, okay, there's the amount of stress and time it's taken, not making too much money. You see the manager's got more stress and time, but they're also making more, but is it worth that much more? Her broader proposal, so to speak, her philosophy, her insight was trying to bring to the surface that it's a bit of an unfair game because once you get up to the executive level, the director and the executive level, this is where the older population lives. They don't wanna lose these jobs with all of the bag. And as you get further up the food chain, the responsibilities or the stress starts to become less and less. Therefore, you've got people that have less stressful jobs making all kinds of bank. They're older, they don't wanna walk away from that stuff. So you have this kind of log jam, which is mostly correct. But I existed on this plateau for the past 10 or 11 years. And there are a lot of other levels to this. And there's a lot of other variables to this. I'll maybe get 50% into how much there is to discuss about how all of this works. But at least this can be a foundational point. This should be helpful in a multitude of ways. If you're trying to wrap your head around career growth, all that kind of good stuff, how far you want to go, because the challenge that I'm trying to help address is not only how do you get from here to here or wherever you want to go, but how can you get the right people here to help all of this, 
right? I think one of the biggest things that people don't understand is how much the director and the executives can help out these people at the manager and the associate level. Like once you get into a position where you can actually help from a budgeting perspective and have an impact, my ability to help with people's merit increases or how many times I was able to get somebody promoted is not, it's not a limitless pool. I don't control all of a company's dollars. I did not control all of Charter's dollars, but I can control a good amount of it to the best of my ability to try to help out, make sure that people were making what they should be making or that they were making as much as I could get my hands on. And things like, you know, the director, the executive level is gonna be the one that impacts where does the manager live right? I'm making this up. Big companies have a lot of different places. I've had these situations where someone's like, hey, I don't want to live in this market anymore. I need to move over to this market because my in-law is sick. My, this is happening with my sister. And your ability to know how all of this stuff works so you can make that impact for that one person, that's impacting someone's life. Like that's why I was busting my ass for so long. So how do I help create the awareness as to what is possible at these levels, the kind of impact that you can have, but also the awareness as to how the rest of it all works. What the hell's underneath here that's creating that bit of a bump? Oh, it's my other notepad. All right, so yes, at an associate entry level, your workload hours, I would argue that it's probably more than this actually. You're probably doing about the same as a manager just because you're running around like a, you know what, as you're trying to sort through what the hell's going on and trying to bump into each other or not bump into each other, understand your swim lane, all of that kind of good stuff. You're probably not making a whole heck of a lot of money, but you don't have anybody to manage and your stress is still there, but it's not, there's there's other levels of stress that are out there. Then yes, at a manager level, your time starts to increase, your compensation starts to increase. You start all of a sudden have people to manage, which is going to probably triple your responsibility and stress. So like, this is where she was trying to say, you're like, well, wait a minute, why would I even want to do this if it's not going to be that much more money, but I'm having all this additional stress. Then you get to the director level and in her pie chart, it started to kind of narrow back down and then it like, and, and that this is where the log jam is happening. Again, there are so many more levels to this. I think that this is where the challenges lie in regards to creating broader change. At the director level, you're starting to put in a substantial, like you're literally triple the time, I think in some cases, based off of the challenges, because now you only, not only do you have yourself to worry about, you've got your managers, and you have the associate entry level people. So you can have a crap load of people that you are responsible for. Like this, I know directors that had this amount of people to manage. They were still at a director level. Every company and every department is going to be a bit different. These are super broad generalizations, but hopefully it should help at least paint a, a, a bigger picture. So that means your stress is going to be far more substantial, especially when it comes to budget season, you know, having to do annual performance reviews, all that kind of good stuff, which is more hours, more keystrokes, et cetera, on top of whatever your day job responsibilities are, on top of whatever your responsibilities are for the rest of the people on your team, plus managing them and getting them to get along and be on the same page and actually hit goals, et cetera. Then it gets even that much more chaotic. And I'm putting, I group these together because there's not a substantial difference between the entry level executives and then the executive. Like there's only so many hours in a given week that you had. I have a hard time believing that there's a lot more hours that other people were putting in other than me or, or uh, that were putting in more hours than I was. I don't think that everybody should approach it the way that I approached it, but I think that there's also like, it starts to get to a place where like the hours are the hours. Like you're there, you're kind of maximizing things across the board. But yes, these people work a lot. Like I knew a lot of these people that were, yes, they were on email over weekends, but they're not like bullying, at least the good ones, they're not like bullying people and being like, hey, where are we on blah, 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 blah. Like they were just trying to help get shit done mostly amongst this pool so that things could happen seamlessly during a work week. But that's real. Like there's, there are, there are a lot of off hours, hours that are being put in by this pool. Again, I'm sure that's not everywhere, but based on what I've seen between ABC Sports, ESPN, so Disney in a broader capacity as well, Tom Warner Cable, Charter Communications, this is basically a framework of what I had seen firsthand. And also now having spent a few years in the social media space and getting people that have asked me for a lot of one-on-one -on -one time and getting in a position where I understand how other companies work based off of questions and some soft coaching work I'll say that I have done. So this level time is now easily 6X Ah, 6x might be extreme. 
the time is a lot more than what you have down here the bag is also a lot more too this is where you get into the lti space that long-term incentive i think i started to explain that in the first video long-term incentive program where you're starting to see potential equity stock programs things that going that are going to vest in three-year cycles so literally the golden handcuffs for you being pulled along but also again you're having a lot more people i had 270 people at the most over the last 10 years when i was in my role at charter communications that was a lot of people there were executives that didn't have that many there were executives that had more than that and then obviously if you're the executive vice president like that means you're probably running the entire company like that's these things can start to become you know synonymous to a certain extent you know then you've got the most again you're kind of at that capacity from a workload and hours perspective your compensation starts to get into the absolutely gargantuan numbers, but also you've got an entire company or one side of an entire company and your responsibilities and stresses are, are pretty substantial. Like now you're talking about stuff that's not only gonna impact your employees, et cetera, but stock prices, whatever. And obviously there's gonna be di different levels of caring. You could have somebody that's up here that gives zero Fs, right? And so their responsibilities and stress level might be like down here kind of, because they're like, whatever i've got four more years to go i can do all this stuff kind of in my sleep i do get stressed out about things in general and again it depends on how who cares about what but it can vary greatly here above that you start to get into boards the larger companies that have boards those people are also going to make bank they also have responsibilities and stress they're probably stressing out more so than the president and c-level in some cases if they're the ones that are on the hook for how are the stock prices going what the hell's happening with the company overall, stockholders, angst, etc. And then if you've never heard of it, there's stuff like the director emeritus, which is basically you've been with the company forever and you get kind of a golden ticket afterwards to just help out and be a consultant. And your stress is probably a bit less. Again, I'm making generalizations. I can't caveat that enough. Compensation could be gigantic uh, as well and you don't have really any any people to to manage the sphere of influence that i would like to help raise awareness around is really starting i mean a manager to a certain extent director a little bit but certainly in here right like these are the ones that are looking through compensation management tools they are working through budgeting process they are creating larger you know rules and regulations that are impacting everybody what is the work from home situation like is it a three two flex schedule is it a four one you know how clear are the goals like how often are they pushing back against broader policy that's coming up from something that the chair brought up for whatever reason this is where i would like for people to get more comfortable wanting to get to not just because of this but because of how they can take some of this and have it flow back down because there is a massive 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 pay gap here like it is nuts you have people that are in an entry-level position that are making sixty thousand bucks depending on what market they're in and then people that are making whatever x amount they are making out there so like how do you i know i'm not i'm not saying hey let's start a full-on communist society here but there's salary caps work in professional sports. Like, is there something there that we should be discussing in, a, in bigger conversations so that you can have a bit of more of a co cohesive uh, ecosystem? That's what these people can figure out. Like these people impact pay gaps, environmental policy, things that are gonna impact how your health insurance looks. This is the massive sphere of influence. So yes to, this that Kaya put together, but I want to be able to help these folks see that this climb is worth it because of the impact they can then have back down the chain. Maybe I've got delusions of grandeur along those lines, but I think it's totally possible. So that's part of why I want to like maybe start with the 101 content to help kind of build up and get people more comfortable so that they're more comfortable having these conversations. They can see a path to getting here so that they can have a greater impact to kind of spread all this out a bit more. I don't know how long that took, but I'll put a pin in it there. I think that's all I got. I hear some footsteps above me. I should probably go help Kelly with dinner now. I hope this has been, I hope this has been helpful. 
my name is Tim. I'm super appreciative of your time. And this is the deep end. This is officially the deep end. I love y'all. Have a great whatever day it is you're watching this. Thank you.